The helmet of salvation. That's what we're looking at today, guys. Greetings from sunny South Africa. Lovely midwinter's day. In fact, the weather's so great, I hope to get some surfing done tomorrow. But um, that's a beautiful country we live in. But I want to just share with you, as usual, good news about Jesus this, this afternoon. And um, Helmet of Salvation is the next part of uh, the course we're doing, or the series of teachers we're doing on the armor of God. And uh, like everything I teach, it centers around Jesus and the finished work of the cross. The things that Jesus has done for us. The purpose of these teachings is to glorify Jesus by us understanding who we are because of what he's done for us so that we can go out and we can claim the victory in Christ. We can live an abundant life. We can display God's glory to the world so to, to make people jealous for Christ so that he gets the reward of his suffering. We want to see people saved. So salvation, the helmet of salvation is very important. We want to see people saved and we want to understand what we, um, how we are saved and what that means. So we are big into salvation. We believe in preaching the gospel. We're evangelists at heart. Uh, Wake in Africa. We go, we organize uh, trips, mission trips all over Africa. People come from all over the world, go on our adventure mission trips. And if, and if you want to do that, bring a group of people. We'll set something up for you. We see amazing things happening. We've run a school of supernatural ministry. The next one's in January here in Durban, South Africa. Come and join us. Six month school. Amazing stuff. You'll see amazing signs, wonders, and miracles. You'll see many saved. And we are, we, we are about advancing the kingdom of God, about glorifying Jesus. And today I want to say to you, this is good news. The helmet of salvation. And how can you use this in, this, in your life? And what does this mean for you? And again, I'm talking out of experience, somebody that is engaged in spiritual warfare on a regular basis. On a day-to-day -day basis, just living these days is, is a battle. And if we, if we know who we are and we know what God's given us, I want to tell you we can live blessed lives. I am a blessed man. My family is blessed. And listen, that's not to deny that we haven't been through difficult times, times of suffering for the gospel, times of having to fight the fight, but I wouldn't give it up for anything. The Lord has blessed me, and I expect by His grace to move from blessing to blessing and to have the power to overcome when, I, when I'm in a fight. And I, these are the secrets I want to share with you. So today we look in at the um, helmet of salvation. Now, like all helmets, I also ride a motorbike, and when I go out, I wear a helmet. And the reason I want to wear a helmet is I want to protect my head. I want to protect my brain, my mind. And so a helmet is there to protect your mind, the, the, your source of thinking. So, so, so this salvation thing, when you understand salvation, what it means, then it helps you to have a sound mind. And you know, we know that's one of the very big issues today. Mental health, correct thinking is very, very important for us as Christians. And we, and we get that by founding our lives on the truth of the New Testament, the New Covenant, as revealed to us by the Spirit of God. So it's the Word and the Spirit go together to bear fruit for the King and the Kingdom. So we have to put on the helmet. So it's a helmet of salvation. Like any piece of armor, you have to decide to put it on. It's your choice. So you need to choose to be founded in an understanding of salvation. Not only that, the helmet was used to protect, you know, the head. So that you don't get a headshot, as we, as we say in, in army terms. But it was also for the display of the splendor of the king you served. So they would wear helmets and on top would be a crest and, 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 and you know, um, be adorned with engravings and things, displaying the splendor of the regiment you belong to and the king. So people would look at you and not only see a helmet for your protection, but also giving glory to the king that you served. That was a picture that, that Paul would have had when he was looking at this Roman soldier. So the same with us. We want people to look at us and see, yes, we're protected by salvation, but also that we are glorifying Jesus with our lives, that we are declaring his glory. So it's important to understand that the helmet of salvation is there for protection, but also to display the glory of the one we love, the one we serve, 
<laughs> the one who saved us. So our helmets protect our minds, our brains, our source of thinking. And that's important because Romans 2.12, it says, be renewed in the thinking. It also says in the scriptures that we have the mind of Christ. So we need to be in a place of be, be, having our minds protected by the truths of the gospel. So how does salvation protect your mind? How do you actually take it on as a helmet? You do that by understanding the truth about salvation. So first of all, when you understand what salvation is and what Jesus has done for us on the cross, that we are saved by grace through faith in the finished work of the cross, we start to understand that that gives us assurance. It's not something that can be taken from us. It's something that we are assured in because we didn't do it. Jesus has done it. And that's very important, assurance. I always remember like when I was a kid, we used to sing those songs, you know, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Terrible singer, guys, but you know what I'm getting at, eh? <laughs> assurance. Assurance means that guarantee that we are saved. Okay, so you have to know that you are saved. When you know you're saved, when you know that you're not going to lose your salvation, it gives you an absolute confidence to act and to do in this life for Jesus Christ. We have to understand what salvation is. We, we have to know that we have been saved. We're going to look at these things now. You have to know what is the evidence of salvation. And then, most of all, you have to know that Jesus is not just our Savior, okay, the one who saves us, but He's also our Lord. See, there are a lot of people out there who call themselves Christians. And my experience is uh, many of them are not actually saved. They might know Jesus as a good person. Maybe they know Jesus as a Savior that saves them from the consequences of their sins. Maybe they just attend in church, but they have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I want to and I want to just say that today. We have to accept Jesus both as our Savior, the one who saves us from our sins, and as Lord, the one who we give our lives to, who is in control of our lives. So first of all, we're going to look at what is salvation. So salvation, the word salvation comes from the Greek word sozo. Okay, and... Um, you may have heard that word before, but sozo doesn't just mean to, to kind of be saved. It, it's used in multiple ways. It's used over a hundred times in the New Testament, and it's used in multiple ways. It has multiple um, meanings from the same word. So what are some of those meanings? And first of all, and most obvious, we all know that Jesus saved us from our sins. Okay, we are forgiven. So sozo means we are forgiven. We are not enslaved by sin any longer. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are slaves to righteousness. We are no longer going to be condemned to hell for our sins because Jesus paid the price. Jesus atoned for our sins. So we are free from the, from the law of sin and death. The wages of sin is death. We are free from that. We are now under the law of righteousness by God's grace. Not because of anything we've done, but purely by God's grace. So firstly and foremost, Jesus Christ saved us from our sins. He also has delivered us from the evil one. So it says, it says that in, he's set us free from this evil age. Galatians 1.4 Jesus gave himself for our sins and he delivered us from this evil age. So we are no longer under the dominion of the devil and devils. We are no longer sons of the devil or children of Satan. We are no longer darkness. He saved us from that. He sozoed us from the power of the devil and turned us to the power of God. The thing is, Acts 20, 26, it says, I'm sending you to turn, to turn them from, the, from darkness to light, from the power of the devil to God. That's been done by Jesus. Okay? We, he has saved us from hell. We are... are if you are not saved, you are dead in your sin and your ultimate destiny is hell. That's not good news at all. That's horrible news. None of us want anybody to go to hell. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. I don't believe he sends people to hell. I believe people go to hell because they choose to reject God. And let me tell you, a place without God is hell. And some people, in fact, even live in hell on earth now. 
although I believe hell's a real place in the afterlife. Some people, because they reject God now, are in a living hell. But we're being saved from hell. We're being saved into eternal life. Now, eternal life isn't a future event. When you are saved, you have eternal life now. I have eternal life today. From the day I was saved and born again, I have eternal life. I have abundant life of Christ. My life is now eternal. It's something I was given when I was saved. Okay, the word sozo also means to be made healed, uh, to be made whole and healed. So Jesus, when Jesus went and healed the, the, the young girl who was dying, it says he sozoed her, he healed her. So sozo in the package of salvation is physical healing for us. Now that's something I, I battle to work out. Um, the thing of healing, it's available to us. It's something we've all got to work out. We've seen amazing miracles of healing. But I want to tell you, I, ne I need and I want and I long to see even more. So healing, physical healing is part of sozo, to be saved. Another part of sozo is to be delivered, as I said, from evil spirits. Deliverance. I had a lot of deliverance. I was involved in the occult before I was uh, saved. I was involved in Luciferianism and Rosicrucianism and all the isms and transcendental meditation. And when I got saved, boy oh boy, those spirits came out and uh, with a shake and a scream and over a period of time I was delivered from evil spirits and so sozo is also deliverance okay we and sozo also means to be to be saved means to be made whole whole as a person we are forgiven healed and delivered we start to live a whole life we start to have a sound mind and these are all part of the package of salvation that Jesus earned for us 2,000 years ago on the cross. By his stripes we're healed. By his blood our sin is washed away. It's, it's such good news, you know. We, we, we underestimate the power of what Jesus did for us. It's not something we have to get. It's something that was given to us 2,000 years ago. And it's just freely available by faith in the finished work of the cross. Okay, it's Jesus' saving power is available to all who would receive it. Okay, so it's, it's available. God is, by His grace, is pouring out the good news of the gospel to many. The question is, is do people want it? Today, see, salvation isn't a future event. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says, today is the day of salvation. Some Christians are waiting. Oh, the end of my life, I'm going to get this stuff. No, it's today. At the end of your life, you're going to stand before Jesus face to face and see him face to face. That's the most beautiful thing. I can't wait, by the way. But actually, the whole package of salvation is available to me right now. And I've just got to work it out with a little bit of fear and trembling because sometimes we get it wrong. So the question is, is how are we saved? Okay, and uh, vision 2.8 says we are saved by grace. Through faith and not by works, so that no one can boast. Nobody can save themselves. We can only be saved by responding to God's love and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. So, so you know, all those years ago when I was in the occult and I was messing around with all this occultic stuff and evil and sexual immorality and all that stuff, I started feeling a prompting in my heart. I started feeling drawn to God and I'm like... But I don't even believe in God, but there was something being stirred up. And that was God calling me. See, the initiative is always of, for salvation is always God's, who then gives us freedom of choice to choose to respond. So I was unsaved, and I remember I was living in England at the time, and I remember like sitting outside of a church and hearing people singing hymns and psalms and longing to go in. But I had a real problem with Christians, I must be honest with you. And I never went in until I was 35 years of age and I was here in South Africa. And one day I went to a, a church. My children were going to this school at this church, this crash. And I just experienced the love of God through the people there. And uh, that, that love of God being exp uh, experienced for the first time, the unconditional love of God started drawing me by the Holy Spirit to God. The Holy Spirit was drawing me in. I was resistant, I want to tell you. But I was really sick. And one day I decided to go to, to one of these crazy Christian meetings where they were talking about getting healed. And I was big into occultic healing and all that. But I was always sick. 
went into the back of the church, sat down, and the Holy Spirit just came upon me like a Pauline like type experience. I just shook and quaked and wailed and fell down on the floor shaking. I thought I was dying, but actually, <laughs> it was the Holy Spirit touching me with the love of God. And my eyes were open. And for the first time, I realized that God was real. Oh. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Lord, for saving me. <laughs> and then <laughs> I got down on my knees and I invited Jesus into my life. I repented of all that junk that I'd be involved in. So, John 1, 2 says, To all who would receive him, they have the right to become children of God. See, it's, it's Jesus' it's grace, the power of the Holy Spirit reaches out to us. And then we have to decide, are we going to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior? Some people want to just receive Him as Savior. Oh Lord, please take away, take away the consequences of my sin. I'm having a hard time. They, but they don't really want to receive Him as Lord and Savior and become children of God. But that day, I got down on my knees. I was born again by the Spirit of God. I invited God into my life. I said, Lord, please, I want to respond to your love and to your grace. And he came into my life and I became a child of God. So Acts 3, 9 says, uh, you know, what must we do to be saved? We must repent. We've got to turn away. Now the word repent means to change our minds. It means to turn around from our old way of thinking. Where I used to think sexual immorality was okay. I used to think that the occult was okay. I repented. I turned around and I said, what I used to think was okay is not okay. And Lord, today I'm going to do things your way. Today I'm going to choose to follow you, Jesus. Come into my life. So repentance. It's not a whole load of confession of sins, although that's good to do sometimes. Get it off your chest. But the, but the real thing is to change your mind about what's good and what's bad. And to a, allow Jesus to come in and change you. To give him lordship. You see, there's a yielding. It's a submitting to Jesus. So Jesus, it says in Romans 10, if you declare Jesus with your mouth is Lord and you believe in your heart, then you will be saved. So again, it's, it's like you have to speak. So you want to know if you're, if you're saved, then do you confess Jesus is the Lord? Do you tell people, hey, Jesus is my Lord and Savior? Do you believe in your heart that he died on the cross and rose again? See, it's, it's, it's confession and it's believing and that's and that's that's the start. It says if you if you do that, then you then you're saved. And yes, you got to work that out. And yes, you got to get deeper in and, and yield to Jesus. And but that's not the, the 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 issue. There is not whether you saved. The issue is there is working out all that old stuff out your system, renewing your mind, being delivered and stuff like that. John three seven says we must be born again. You see, it's a spiritual birth. It's not something you can do. It's the Spirit of God comes in and touches you and you are born again. You actually come alive in the Spirit. You become a new creature. And it's a mystical thing. You know, it's not, this is not feelings. This is, this is fact about what the Word of God says. You see, your salvation is not based on whether you feel saved. It's based on what Jesus did for you 2,000 years ago and you have accepted that. And He's reached out to you and touched you. So many Christians call themselves Christians, but they're just traditional Christians. They just, sadly, they know, they know about Jesus, but they do not know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Those are the people that will fall away. Those are the people that backslide. Those are the people, okay, that start off and sometimes even see the Holy Spirit move in and then they fall away. And sadly, some Christians take certain scriptures and they say, Oh, yeah, but you can see you can lose your salvation. I want to tell you something. I do not believe you can lose your sight. If you are saved, the scriptures make it clear. You are saved by God. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And there's proof of your salvation. So the proof of that salvation is that you want to tell others about Jesus. Your life is about Jesus. You want him more of Jesus. You might not know how to get it. And you might be confused about some things. But, but your heart's desire, it's all about your heart. You desire intimacy with God. These are all signs that you're saved. The fact some people say, well, am I lost? Have I backslidden? Has I lost my salvation? The fact that you're worried about that is proof that you're saved. 
Because I want to tell you, sinners out there don't care about God. They don't care whether they're saved. They're not asking the question, am I, am I really saved? The fact that you've repented from sin, that you don't want it anymore. One of the greatest signs, it's not saying that you're without sin, okay? Because yes, we still sin and we still get it wrong. But as it says in, in that 1 John scripture, 1 John 1, it says, you know, that we, that we will not continually want to continue in sin. A born again Christian does not want to continue in sin. We want to live a holy and righteous life. We can do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can do that as we yield to Jesus. See, we have a conviction of, that sin is evil and bad and harmful and we don't want to do it. Then you know you're saved because sinners out there, they don't want to do that. They love sin. <laughs> and if you are battling with sin, get some help. Okay, get some help. We need to be accountable. The Holy Spirit working in you. If you're saved, you're going to have that sense of the Holy Spirit working in you. So just to conclude, I want to say that Jesus saved us. Okay, Titus 3, 3 5 says he has saved us. Ephesians 1 13 says you were included in Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 14 says you've been adopted into the family of God and the Son. You cannot undo that. Let me just say if you are born again, if you've been included in Christ, if you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit, no matter what you do, you cannot undo that. So stop worrying about your salvation. Instead, take hold of it and Thrash it out in the world. Overcome evil. Preach the good news. Share the good news with your work works. Share the good news with the people in your college and schools. With your family. Stop worrying about whether you're saved. you saved. If you're not saved, right now, I want to just give you that opportunity. And I say to you, if you're not saved, repent of your sins. Invite Jesus into your life as Lord and Savior. It's just a simple prayer. I'm going to put the prayer up at the end so that you can pray that. And then you need to go and tell someone. You need to witness that you've given your life to Jesus. So guys, this is good news. Salvation is a big subject. Don't let anybody undermine your salvation. Let me just say that. That's what the helmet is all about. The helmet is assurance that you're saved and that all those benefits I've been talking about are being worked out. And that you are a victorious soldier of Christ advancing the kingdom of God. That will see blessings. That will bring change about on, on this earth. Because the, sons of the, the whole of creation is waiting for us, the sons of God, to manifest. So this is good news. The conclusion is, know that you are saved. Put that on your head. Let everybody see it. I am saved. I love Jesus. <laughs> I'm advancing his kingdom. There is good news for everybody who would believe. If you like this video as usual, I want to ask you, please click the subscribe button in the right hand bottom corner. But not only that, also another secret I've learned, got to turn on the little bell, that notification button, so that whenever I post a new video, you get notice. I'm going to be posting every Friday good news that's going to strengthen you, strengthen your family. Share this with others. This is not about me. This is about Jesus, the truth of the Word of God, implemented into our lives in the power of the Holy Spirit. It makes me so happy to share this. And may the joy of the Lord be your strength. And even now, may the joy of the Lord overwhelm you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>